Hey y'all, hotel, I'm glad to bless up. Greetings. I'm going to put on my sunglasses so I can see what you ain't looking at. Um, this is me, uh, this is Abena, the, still the recovering African. You know, here at Abena's World at AfricaLive.com. Coming to you from this plantation nation. <laughs> reporting to you from my plantation station. My station is the recovery room of Racism Non Anonymous. Um, I just had this thought as I'm um, uh, kind of sailing and surfing through the various social networks and places of interaction. Um, and as I did so, it just kind of, you know, hit me again why, you know, the level of popularity, if you will, for such social networking. Um, and one of the things that happens when people um, and groups of people are experiencing traumatic stress, it is very typical, normal, logical, if you will, to come together. Um, when when that has happened, um, you think about it from a perspective of, you know, a war zone, or even just think about it from the perspective of many of the movies that have been out in the past 10 years or so that sort of show um, uh, scenes or possibilities of the end of the world. Uh, for example, um, I think Independence Day um, when Will Smith's partner, you know, she got to safety. People got to safety for where they were. But then the goal was for people to begin to search for other people who may have lived through whatever tragic event has taken place. Recently they showed um, Stephen King's movie, The Stand, I saw that on uh, Sci-Fi or something. That was a book. I was a Stephen King fan from the time I was a child and would read all of his uh, novels. The Stand was one of them I read when I was a teenager, and I read that book probably three or four times. At any rate, um, you know, it, it, it shows, you know, how a virus just wipes out all of the most people of the world. The few who are left, the survivors begin to seek out each other. And by the same token, as I recognize um, the levels, you know, just so aware, keenly aware of the experiences that people have had um, in their lives, and these are black and white, alike, Chinese, black, white, non-white, non-black, you know, all of us, just because of this system of racism and white supremacy, this system of capitalism, democracy, and imperialism, and all these other isms and different things, what they are designed and set up to do and what happens is it causes intentional harm to the folks who are part of it, the system. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's like signing up for some of those reality shows where people do anything for, you know, do these wild and crazy things for money, right? Um, you know, you kind of sign up to participate in this shit in hopes of um, an outcome where you kind of make it big. And that type of uh, mentality and behavior is so very well integrated and interwoven in every aspect of everybody's life. And it represents acts of intentional harm to people, you know, causing emotional, psychological, physical, spiritual, cultural harm, educational harm to people. You know, certain of those areas of harm, it influences people's identity and how they view themselves, the sense of themselves that they have when you um, cause intentional harm to them from an educational perspective knowingly lying to them about who or what they are. It's like you do, you start up telling a child from the time they are infant, you know, to, to adolescent or adulthood, 
that you ain't shit, you ain't never gonna be shit, you this, you that. You tell them these lies about themselves, you dumb, you stupid. What, what do you believe the outcome is gonna be? You know, you, you educate them in a way that damages their sense of self, their identity, who they, who they got, come to know themselves to be, based on the input. Now, say, in a family, you give them that input, they go to school in the communal level, and they're getting the same messages, just reinforced. So, you know, it's those acts of intentional harm that everyone experiences in this system of racism, white supremacy, and in, in, and in any social system where um, capitalism, democracy, imperialism, any of those things are the norm, hierarchy, you know, where a small majority determine, dictate the, you know, the lived experiences of the, the broader society. And members of the society participate in this shit when you go and you vote and you say, okay, I'm going to participate. I'm going to go to work, I'm going to pay my taxes, I'm going to do this, I'm going to follow all these rules and laws and framework because in the end, this is the pot of gold that I will win. And then, of course, when you don't win that pot of gold, it's because you did something wrong along the journey, at least that's how the system is set up and designed. So, I said all that to say, to suggest that as a result, People experience tremendous amounts of, of abuse or traumatic stress. And it's normal, it's very typical when that happens for survivors of abuse, you know, to seek out other survivors. Hence, the growth of social networking and via YouTube, forum sites, you know, now Facebook, MySpace, people coming together, Twitter, where we can talk to each other and talk to each other. And did you see that? And did you see that? And yeah, I see that. What about this? Well, this is what we should do. And this is how we should do it. That's what they need to do. Everybody, you know, because everybody's sort of like surviving and surviving this terrible, terrible experiences on a daily flipping basis. And that was just, you know, the connection. It's like, you know, why social networking um, has has the strength of power that it has and that it has taken on since the internet sort of became available to to most people who are able to access it, you know. And so that's what I wanted to say today. Where's my little uh, remote? I'm going to kind of keep coming back and I'm still in it. I'm still in, it in my little section of, you know, um, you know, this plantation nation where I'm surviving also. I, and I had that epiphany in part because it's like I really work to understand myself. Like, why do I keep coming to these places and sitting here waiting and trying to connect and trying to talk? Why do I do that? And then it's like the, you know, as a traumatized traumatologist, as a traumatologist first, who experienced in the traumatic stress like everybody else, it's like, okay, because I'm looking to be connected with people that's, you know, it's very lonely, you know, if, if you're the only person in a particular area who survived the virus, <laughs> you know, and so I'm looking for other people who who also survived it, sort of, you know, um, and that's, that's what it is, but uh, I'm going to kind of keep coming back at it. Peace.